Welcome back. So what we're looking at today is how to import geometry, imprint, and set this up for CHT using the parts tree within Star System Plus version 5.04. What we've done in the previous lecture is import and imprint our components and split by surface topology to extract our internal flow volumes and all of our interfaces between the fluids and the solids. What we need to do now is send all this to the CFD world, or to regions, because what we've been working with up in parts is purely geometric definition and surface cleanup. Once we go to regions, we can then start the CFD side, or the meshing side. All right. So the first thing I want to do is send one region per part, so I get each individual region as its own, I'm sorry, each individual part as its own region. Then in boundary mode, we want one boundary per part surface, so that way I get my inlets and outlets and the other surfaces I may have slid off. And finally, I want to make sure that I create interfaces out of all those contacts that were created when we split by surface topology. So, now what you'll see is I have 11 regions. Step number two. So what we need to be looking at now is how to mesh this problem. Now we already established during our cleanup process and our split by surface pro process that we don't need to surface wrap because we have a clean, closed volume that is ready for surface remeshing and CHT. I'm going to select meshing models, I'm going to remesh, I'm going to fill it up with polyhedral cells, and put prism layers near the wall. Okay, so once I've defined this, I want to look into the models. When I modify the models inside of my meshing continuum, I'm modifying how they work. For instance, how the prism layer growth rate occurs. How small the prism layer can get before it collapses completely. You can change this to say 1% if you'd like. We have our layer reduction percentage, which allows, let's say we put in 10 layers. If I make this value 80%, what this means is it can remove eight of those 10 layers before it retracts completely. And that way you won't have a retracted prism layer with 10 layers inside of it. On the surface remesher side, the thing that I'm really concerned with is proximity. Because when you're meshing sheet metal components, the inner and outer walls of the sheet metal tend to be very close together. So what you get is over refinement based on proximity, because what the remesher sees is that these two surfaces here, the outer and the inner, are very close to each other. So it'll try to refine basically everywhere. And I want to go ahead and turn off that proximity refinement so I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So I've done my model settings. Most times you probably won't be modifying your model settings, but it's always there if needed. Now down to reference values. You always want to pick a base size that's going to kill the most birds with one stone. So you want a size that will be appropriate in most places and then will capture most of your geometry uh, with the, doing the fewest number of custom settings. In my case, I want to be able to capture most of these curves so I'll kind of look around and find my average curvature here. So this part in this transition piece, this is probably my tightest curvature. And this side over here is probably average. So if I were to imagine cell size needed here, I'd probably need a cell size minimum of probably two and a half or so millimeters. But I could probably get away with something about 10 millimeters in most spots. So you can kind of use your measure tool to imagine what the surface triangulation will look like. So based on that, I'm going to use a base size of about 10 millimeters. Now, if you work in inches, you can certainly type in half an inch. The next setting here is CAD projection. In these types of cases, I'm not really that worried about CAD projection. And what that will do is project the node locations of your surface mesh back to the analytical definition of the CAD surface. I don't particularly uh, mind in this particular case. If I was going to do, let's say, for instance, a missile or an external aerodynamics case where I have a very slow lofting surface and very high speed flow, you can actually develop shock waves off of inappropriate geometry or surfaces that are tessellated only. So you always have to be a little bit careful with that, but in most internal cases, it's not a big deal at all because you're talking about fractions of millimeters. Okay, number of prism layers. Let's bump this up to four. 
I'm still going to be using a high wall or log law approach, but I want to have at least four prism layers there. And I'm going to set my growth rate to about 1.2, which corresponds to about 120%. So the first layer is, say, 100%. The next layer is 120% larger. And my prism layer thickness. Now, this particular setting, I usually turn off relative to base. And I make it an absolute value and effectively decoupling my prism layer thickness from my base size. Because if I were to go in later and decide that I want you know, a finer base size or a coarser base size, I know that the phenomena of my boundary layer will always be the same. So I won't worry about, uh, I don't want this to be coupled to my prism layer. All right, so we can see here on our surface size, we established we needed about a minimum of about two and a half millimeters and a target of about 100, or I'm sorry, 10 millimeters. So you can see here that our minimum size defaults to 25% of our base. So that's kind of the minimum bookend that it'll be allowed to do to refine to as it's going through uh, this geometry. So it can go anywhere from two and a half millimeters to 10 millimeters. Okay, so continual wide, that's pretty much all the settings I need to do. Now for visual reference, the next thing I usually do is go ahead and make sure that my fluid regions are of type fluid and my solid regions are of type solid. Now this is not really defining the physics in any way. It's simply giving me a visual representation so I can see which ones are solid and which ones are fluid just by quick inspection. Because what I want to do inside of my solid regions is disable my prism layer. So I'm going to expand custom prism mesh and disable in all of those regions. So what you saw was the multi-edit tool and we can pop that up again. So in all of my fluid solid interfaces I need to also have uh, prism layers grown because on a fluid fluid interface we do not grow prism layers and that's the default value in Star System Plus. So what we want to do on our fluid solid is grow prism layers from that interface. You can see that's what this option does. Okay, so that's all the settings we really need to do. The only things I want to do before I go ahead and volume mesh is make my inlet of type inlet. So my upstream inlet. I'll make that, let's say, a stagnation pressure inlet. That's a total pressure. Then on my downstream side, I want to have pressure outlet. That way I don't generate prism layers on those particular surfaces. Star Season Plus will automatically recognize that these surfaces are inlets or outlets and that these fluid solid interfaces don't need prism layers either. So it will automatically disable prism layers on those surfaces. Okay, so our surface remesh is done. Let's go ahead and create a new mesh scene and take a look at that surface mesh and make sure that we're happy with the sizing. I am generally pleased with how it's refined on these tighter portions of the curvature and the transition piece as well. Generally I'm okay with the sizing. Let's go ahead and continue this on for volume meshing. I'll hit my volume mesh button here. Okay, and the volume mesh is done. So I'm going to go ahead and right click in the background and apply representation volume mesh. So what you see now is we have our four prism layers, we have our solid with no prism layer, and we have polyhedras in the core. So let's take a quick cut through here and take a look at some of the mesh inside. I hit my F of X button, draw a line, and I'm going to put this in an existing displayer my mesh one displayer inside of my mesh scene. Hide some of these components here. So what you can see is we have a one to one connective mesh, our fluid and our solid. And then no prism layers on our fluid to heat exchanger. And then prism layers 
only on those walls. Let me go ahead and change how I'm coloring this model. I'm going to change my color mode to, let's distinguish regions. And I'm going to show only my plane section. This way you can see how everything interacts. Okay, so that's volume meshing for CHT inside of Star CCM Plus using the parts tree in version 5.04. What we'll be doing in the next lecture is setting up our physics to be able to do conjugate heat transfer. So I'll have plastic pipes, rubber coupling, and a heat exchanger as we flow air through it. Thank you.